Hello, welcome to this Pro Tools video tutorial for the Intermediate Film Sound course at the Los Angeles Film School. This tutorial will cover basic operation of how to sync timecode with a video file to timecode within Pro Tools. I'm going to begin by creating a new session. I'm going to choose WAV Files, 24-bit, sample rate 48K, and under I.O. settings, I'm just going to go to Stereo Mix. And I'm going to choose a place to save my session. I'm going to save it on my external hard drive and we'll name it Video Sync Demo. So my edit window pops up. Let's begin by making sure that our main timecode counter is in SMPTE timecode. Next, I want to check a couple of basic things. I want to be in grid mode, which again is F4. I want to be in my selector tool, F7. And I want to make sure that my grid and nudge values are set for one frame each. There is a keyboard command to change these. If you want to change your nudge value, you hold down Command and Option and use the plus and minus keys. If you want to change your grid value, you use Control and Option and the plus or minus keys. Next, I want to check my session setup window. You could do this a couple of different ways. If you have a numeric keypad on your keyboard, you can hold down Command and press 2 on the numeric keypad. Additionally, if you don't have that keypad, you can go to the Setup drop-down and click on Session. There are two basic things to check in this window right now. First, I want to look at my session start time. For this video, we're going to make sure our session start time is 57 minutes and 30 seconds. Next thing to check is going to be our timecode rate. For this video, I'm going to set my timecode rate to 29.97 frames per second drop frame. These things will change depending on the video you're going to be using, so make sure you check any spec sheet you may have for that video. Now we can go ahead and close this window. Now I'm going to import a video file into my session. You could do this a couple of ways as well. You can use the file drop-down and go to import and choose video. Or, there's a keyboard shortcut for this, shift option command i. A window pops up asking me what video do I want us to put into my session. I'm already in a folder with videos. So I'm going to use one of these. I'm going to use Cover Me. Under the Video Import Options window, it gives me a choice of different things to use. I'm going to go ahead and set this up to be on a new track since I don't have a video track in my session yet. And under Location, I'm going to choose Session Start. And in this case, I do want to have the audio that comes in with the QuickTime video. So I'm going to select Import Audio from File. Now Pro Tools is going to ask me, where do I want to save my audio files? I'm going to save them directly into my session's audio files folder. Alright, I'm just going to move my video window down here and resize it a little bit so it takes up less of my screen. Take note of what happened in our session here. The video window that pops up has a SMPTE timecode window burn on it. There's also this timecode up in Pro Tools. The whole goal is to make these two numbers be the same, which they're not right now. So now, what I'm going to do is use my selector tool within my video clip. And it's important to be within the video clip here, because if you're in the timeline, this isn't going to work. And if you're in the audio, this isn't going to work. So we're going to be inside the video clip. And I'm going to move this around until I get this number here to read one hour. Once I get fairly close, I can use my nudge keys to get there faster. This is plus and minus on the numeric keypad. Or, if you're using the laptop and you don't have the numeric keypad, make sure you're in Command's Focus Mode and you can use period and comma to nudge one frame at a time as well here. This number now reads one hour. I'm going to drop a sync point in my video clip. Do this by pressing Command Comma. This little green triangle shows up here in the bottom of that clip. This is my sync point. Now what I want to do is I want to move this video clip to a point within the session where that sync point ends up at one hour. I'm going to do this by going to spot mode and selecting my grabber tool and click on the video clip. The spot dialog box pops up and under the box that's labeled sync point I'm going to type in one hour. When I hit OK it's going to move my video within my session so that that sync point ends up at one hour in my session. I'm immediately going to go back to grid mode and I'm going to use my selector tool for a moment here and I want to check and click within the video 
and look and see if this number and that number are the same, which indeed they are. You might want to zoom out and just click a couple of minutes in and see if they're still the same that far down. And they are, so this is all good. Now I want to bring the audio file over so that it matches sync with the video. I'm going to go back to my grabber tool. And the easiest way to do this is to get my selector at the beginning of my video clip. And I could do this easily by selecting the video clip. Now holding down control on the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and click on the audio with the grabber tool. And it's going to move the audio clip over so that it matches up with the beginning of my selector, which happened to be the beginning of my video. Now I'm going to go back to my selector tool and find a spot that looks like maybe there's some dialogue so that we can play it and check and make sure that the audio and video are in sync with each other. The teacher's death ruled a homicide. How can you justify opening the school just three days after there was a murder? First, let me say that Jean Collins was a beloved and well-respected member of this faculty. And her that looks okay. Now I want to lock these clips within my session. I'm going to select both clips and press Command L. And that gives me a little padlock in each one of the lower hand corners of these clips. Now our video and audio are locked up to timecode within Pro Tools and we can begin any number of different things we might need to do for our post-production workflow. That concludes this video tutorial. Thanks for watching. <laughs>